Not every piece of packaging makes such a spectacular exit. Millions of packages in Germany simply feel empty at some point, squeezed out and useless. The result is two and a half million tons of packaging waste each year that ends up in the yellow bag or the yellow bin. And from there, to a sorting plant. The problem is different kinds of plastic are difficult to separate from each other and from other materials. That's why most waste ends up being used for energy recovery. The empty packaging is burned for energy in conventional power plants, for example, or in the steel or cement industry. At this sorting plant in southern Hessen, the Milo company plans to greatly increase the proportion of reusable waste, the kind that can be recycled into new products. Waste is collected from yellow bags and yellow bins in the surrounding region. The problem is, the waste contains material that doesn't belong here, like non-returnable packaging and a large amount of other household waste as well. This bottle belongs in the yellow bin. It's made of high-density polyethylene, also known as HDPE, as does this bottle made of polyethylene terephthalate, or PET, and this bottle cap made of polypropylene, or PP for short. These reusable plastics are mixed up with other materials. A homogenous stream of material gets sorted out later in the process. First, the waste is gathered from a 300-kilometer radius that includes the states of Bavaria, Baden-Württemberg, Rhineland-Pfalz, and Hessen. 120 tons of waste are gathered each year. That equals around 5% of the waste collected in yellow bags and bins across Germany. The sorting takes place almost automatically. In a large machine hall, the flow of waste runs over a two and a half kilometer long conveyor belt. In the first stage, the material falls into a large rotary sieve. Here, the various packaging and other materials are sorted out according to size. Smaller pieces simply fall through the holes. The rest is transported to two additional drums. Finally, five separate streams are created containing different sized material. Separating the material by size makes further sorting procedures much easier. In a special air separator, a blast of wind blows lighter material, such as foil, out of the material stream. The air separator and other machines remove most of the foil from the material stream. That makes the hard plastic easier to sort out. The more thoroughly the plastic is sorted out, the better it can later be used to create high quality products. In a further stage, an infrared scanner quickly scans for types of plastic. Air pressure can then shoot out the PP bottle caps, for example. Then comes the PET, and finally HDPE is sorted out of the material flow. Despite the automated sorting process, the already well-sorted material streams are then picked through by hand. The most useful plastics stay on the belt. 
Around one third of the total initial material, however, consists of mixed plastics and residual waste that has no further use. Everything from old shoes to pieces of wood. It's all destined for energy recovery, incineration. Packaging from the yellow bin is put through more than 30 sorting procedures at the plant in Gansheim. Along with HDPE, PP and PET waste, there are four other plastic fractions here. The sorted plastic is pressed into bales. The HDPE, PP and PET bales have a purity level of 94 to 98%. This well-sorted plastic waste is a sought-after secondary raw material in the plastic processing industry. The plant in Hessen supplies companies in Germany and in neighboring countries. HDPE bottles, for example, are used to make pipes or specialized pallets. PP plugs are often turned into flower pots or buckets. and PET packaging is turned into fibers used in fleece sweaters or into stylish lawn furniture. But even if the furniture looks great and the sweater is comfortable, these products only have a limited lifespan within this kind of material recycling. Producing these products may save raw materials such as oil, but at some point, they too will end up in the dump or waste incineration plant. Despite all the sorting, a full-fledged material cycle for plastic packaging has not yet been created. To create a genuine cycle, that means a bottle is made into another bottle, the sorted plastic fractions need further processing. Systec Plastics in Thuringia is doing just that at a special plant in the town of Eisfeld. First, HDPE bottles end up here in a shredder. The resulting plastic shreds are cleaned of any shampoo, yogurt, or any other residue and a special procedure sorts out the last unwanted remains. The result is a colorful mixture of clean flakes that are made almost entirely out of HDPE. These still have to be sorted out by color. If they were melted down as is, they'd turn a dirty gray. This color sorting takes place in a special sorter. Special mechanics allow the machine to isolate single flakes from a large mass. HDPE particles are run over a slide piece by piece. Tens of thousands per minute. LEDs light up the material stream while sensors recognize the different colors. The data is analyzed by a computer which controls a panel fitted with more than 60 compressed air nozzles. A blast of air shoots out the unwanted colors. Only the colorless flakes remain, if so desired. After this process is carried out over the first two slides, it's repeated on the next two. And a final repetition on the last one. The result is an output of 800 kilograms of sorted HDPE flakes per hour with a purity level well above 99%. The material is melted at 220 degrees Celsius in an extruder. The melt is pressed through a filter and once again purified. Then the liquefied plastic is cooled and processed into granules. The result is a high quality raw material that is put to use nearly everywhere in the plastics industry. 
Besides HDPE packaging, polypropylene, or PP caps, are put through these elaborate cleaning, sorting, and processing stages as well. Every year, around 20,000 tons of material from the yellow sack is processed here in Eisfeld. But only a small portion gets the full treatment. Production capacity is set to increase in the future, and the procedure is to be further improved. We can already take plastic from the yellow bag and turn it back into plastic. We now plan to enter areas related to the food industry. We'll start with cosmetics, then move on to food at some point. We think it'll take a few years and then our plastic will be hygienic enough for that. Recycled material from Eisfeld is already sought after by the makers of washing and cleaning products. At its location in Mainz, the Vanna and Matz company produces more than 130,000 tons of foamy and fragrant detergents. Normally, the packaging ends up in the yellow bag. To complete the material cycle, the company tries to use as much plastic as possible from the yellow bag to produce its bottles. The HDP granulate from Eisfeld is fed here into a machine. It's then melted in a special extruder. The bottles are formed under air pressure. Afterwards, excess material is trimmed off and the bottles are ready. Even though these bottles were made using only recycled plastic from the yellow bag, any standard production facility could manufacture them. Finally, the HDPE bottles are filled up as usual and delivered to shops. Five and a half million bottles each year. It's not only HDPE bottles that are made of recyclable material. These PP caps are also produced using 100% plastic from the yellow bag. Once again, it's recycled granulate from Eisfeld that does the job. We use recycled material from the yellow bag for our PET and HDPE bottles and for our PP caps, and we hope to increase this share in the future. We're still looking for market partners in this initiative in order to further lower recycling material costs. In other words, the more packaging producers use recycling material from the yellow bag, the greater the production capacity will grow making it more economical to use this recycled material. At Vanna and Metz, PET bottles make up a large share of packaging. Despite all the sorting with high-tech machinery, adequate quantities of PET granulate from the yellow bag still aren't available. So PET granulate from the yellow bag is mixed with PET granulate from the deposit system, mostly made from empty beverage bottles. The preforms from the first production stage in Mainz are blown into bottles and later filled. In the end, they're made of 20% PET plastic from the yellow bag and 80% plastic from the deposit system. More than 80 million bottles are produced this way each year at the plant in Mainz. The company aims to gradually increase the share of PET bottles made with yellow bag material while at the same time using more of this high-quality recycled plastic for all of its packaging. That means an HDPE bottle is made from another HDPE bottle. A PP cap from a PP cap. And a PET bottle from another PET bottle. That preserves the raw materials and energy invested in plastic production. Until now, only a fraction of packaging from the yellow bag and bin got recycled. But experience shows that plastic from the yellow bag can be used in a material cycle.
And no matter how unspectacular the shot, at least it's one bottle more.